रघुपति राघव राजा राम पति तपावन सीता रघुपति राघव राजा राम पति तपावन सीता सीता जय सीता सीता जय सीता सीता जय सीता सीता जय सीता रघुपति राघव राजा राम पति तपावन सीता सुंदर विग्रह मेघ श्याम गंगा तुलसी शालिग्राम रघुपति राघव राजा राम पति तपावन सीता भद्रगिरीश्वर सीता भगत जन प्रिय सीता भद्रगिरीश्वर सीता भगत जन प्रिय सीता रघुपति राघव राजा राम पति तपावन सीता जानक रमणा सीता जय जय राघव जय रघुराम रघुपति राघव राजा राम पति तपावन सीता श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम श्री राम जय राम जय सीता सीता राम भगवान की जय लोका राम रन रंग गधीर राजीवने रघुवंशनाथ कारुण्यूप करीरामचंद्र शरण प्रपदे श्रीरामचंद्र भगवान की जय हरे कृष्ण so happy to be back here with the richmond devotees thank you so much last time that uh, i was uh, there with you all we were doing nam ramayan and we did do the first kanda the bala kanda but then somehow i had some travels to do and then um, we had to stop in between but i'm happy that i'm able to complete it uh, before shri ram and navmi so um last time we discussed that how um, um okay now i think i just missed on one thing jagat guru shila prabhupad ki jai iskon vartman guru rind ki jai his holiness jai pataka swami guru maharaj ki jai <coughs> without remembering shila prabhupad and guru maharaj and gurus whatever you speak is is useless no i'm always reminded of this past time of how there was this one disciple of a guru you know who just about knows every verse and then when his guru is about to test him the guru tells him that you know i am busy and preoccupied today you just go to this banyan tree which is in front of the ashram 
and go and recite all your verses there and if you have made any mistake you know the leaves will drop by themselves just collect those leaves and come to me and i'll know how many mistakes you made so he just goes and speaks everything in front of the banyan tree and to his horror when he opens his eyes he sees all the all the leaves have fallen down and he just runs back to guru and he asks what did i do wrong and guru says did you say that was this was he said i said everything correctly and then guru says but did you remember me before beginning your exam and he says no <clears throat> i didn't <clears throat> so he said that's why you got a big zero and all the leaves fall down so this time when you go you remember me first and you then speak and he does that and this time none of the leaves fall so it's like that you know whatever we do we remember the vaishnavas and we remember the guru then everything goes right otherwise it's useless whatever we talk so um so yeah now that we have remembered the gurus and we have remembered prabhupad so last time that i was here we were speaking that how ramayan has 24000 verses but uh, valmiki ramayan and we can't cover them all so we have planned to take up naam ramayan which is by lakshman acharya in the siri sampradaya and he has given a summary of this whole ramayan in 108 verses and however he also divides this 108 verses into different kandas seven kandas actually with uttar kanda so last time i remember we did bala kanda and we spoke about how the putra kamishti yagya happened and how finally the lord appeared and how lord was taken away from his home by vishwamitra um and then on a purpose and then how lord um um helps um the sages to complete their fire sacrifice successfully and then how he kills tadaka and then how um how he delivers ahalya and then how he gets married to mother sita and i think that's where we ended the balakanda so now uh, the lord has appeared and the lord is giving lot of ananda to everybody so now this ayodhya kanda is more about um, how this whole conspiracy will unfold and how you know kai kai mantra and this whole episode will start now so as we did it last time we will recite verse and then we will you know bec- of course again all said and done it's not so much into in chronological order it just goes here and there but it tells us the whole summary of the uh, ramayan and this way we will also complete reciting all the 108 verses of naam ramayan so we will start today with um, ayodhya kand so very beautiful beautiful glories of lord will be explained here so if you have it you can share it on the screen otherwise you can just put naam ramayan on the google and you will get it ayodhya kand aganit guna gana bhushit rama vanitanya kamit rama rakachandra samanan rama pitruvakya ashrit kanan rama ram ram jay raja ram 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 jay sita ram so um now this ayodhya kand begins and now um lakshmana acharya is glorifying about the beautiful qualities of lord ram he says he starts this kand with very beautiful word i like that aganita aganita ganita means you can count aganita means which you can't even count unlimited so he says aganita guna gana bhushita rama oh my dear lord ram who is having unlimited qualities unlimited bhushita is abhushan like you know is adorned with so many beautiful qualities and um, actually this ram leela or this ram katha was even spoken by mother yashoda to lord krishna that's what bilva mangal thakur says in many of his bhajans that mother yashoda recites ramayan so beautifully and she does that every evening because lord krishna is not sleeping so she just recites the whole pastime of ramayan but sometimes she gets very angry on lord krishna because when she recites the pastimes her whole purpose is that lord should sleep now but instead of uh, you know 
being getting to sleep in the mood of sleep lord ram becomes more active L- sorry lord krishna becomes more active and especially when that past time comes where um, ravan kidnaps sita and our naughty krishna he jumps up on the bed and he says where is lakshman and where is my bow and arrow let us attack ravan and mother yashoda is like come on i am telling you this story so that you can sleep and why are you getting so active and you know worked up about it come on now take rest and then uh, <clears throat> lord krishna looks at balaram and balaram looks and both of them just smile and then they go uh, you know go to sleep so of course um, in the olden times the parents told these stories to the children or the past times of the lord uh, from ramayan so that they can sleep but now these past times need to be told so that they can be awake because you know the way the moral values have been eroded and the way the whole culture is going in drain this needs to be told again and again to wake people up from their slumber that what are you doing we have such a rich culture and we have you know ramayan and you know geeta and we have bhagavatam so get up sleeping souls so um so that's what bilva mangal thakur explains in his uh, bhajans that how beautifully yashoda mata is uh, narrating about the qualities of ram and the past times of ram so here he is saying aganita gunagana and it is definitely aganita another proof for this is when lord gives this service to ananta says that you hold this planet earth and ananta says says fine i'll do that but how long do you want me to hold it then lord says well um, you know just to pass the time you can keep reciting my different names you know and by and when you are done with all my names you can just put the planet earth down from your hoods and the fact that he's still holding the you know the planet on his hoods that means he's still not done with all the names of the lord so there are innumerable unlimited countless names of the lord which he's still reciting and every day every mu- moment is reciting a new name and a new name and it's still not done so aganita gunagana bhushita rama lord ram was endowed with such beautiful qualities in fact if we want to dwell deeper into this for just another two days we can keep talking about his qualities how he was non envious and how he was never seeing fault in others and he was not as naughty as krishna he was from the very beginning um, of his um, childhood he was all for justice and he used to behave like a king and even during his plays like little little playing with the other children he used to say i am the king and i'll i know i'll make a decision and he used to always make wise decision give proper judgments and talk about how to protect the citizens and how to enhance their living situation and what he can do best for others and he was never partial even to his step mothers in fact when guest came to ayodhya they were confused who is ram's biological mother because he used to love all three of them equally and then the way he was very humble and the way he was very tolerant and the way he was very soft with his with his younger brothers and he used to take care of them like a father and he was so courteous and he was so um <clears throat> respectable even to the the people who were serving him in, in you know in the in the palace the so called maid servants in fact in mantra who was a hunchback sometimes bharat or shatrugna used to tease her and ram used to say no don't do that you know be respectful to everybody and um, even like sometimes because dasharath was was so attached to lord ram that sometimes during you know in the late evenings or sometimes in the night when they had some urgent meetings or management administrative meetings he used to have ram in his lap and ram is having his head on dasharath's lap he's just 4 years old and he's sleeping and dasharath is you know addressing those people in the, the administrative council and sometimes you know lord ram used to speak something in between whatever they are talking because he's hearing carefully and say something so witty and everybody used to be surprised oh, oh he's sleeping or he's hearing and how come he's giving such witty answers to whatever the administrative issues or problems they had so from the very beginning he was having such beautiful behavior and such intellect and i was here, i was reading somewhere that he was so good in talking that if you ask him 100 questions he can answer your 100 questions in simply one line and you will be completely satisfied for all that 100 questions you asked so he could just make it very short of course um, uh, 
for us if somebody asks us one question we need to talk 100 lines just to explain the answer for that but it was other way around for lord ram he was just in short he can just tell you what you you know want what you want that's that very intelligent just the right choice of words and so overall everybody was in love with him and um, they used to just love him um uh, krishna stole butter ram didn't but he stole hearts he definitely stole everybody's heart in ayodhya and they were all they were all in love with him so aganita guna gana bhushita rama he never saw faults in anybody he has such wonderful wonderful qualities the next line says avani tanya kamita rama avani is dharti the mother earth tanya is daughter kamita is desiring so who is desiring lord ram says avani tanya the daughter of the mother earth that means sita mata is desiring lord ram so he has such wonderful qualities and mother sita sita desires him is what he says in the uh, starting two lines and then the third line he says raka chandra sama anana rama raka chandra is moon and what kind of moon the moon it looks so beautiful in the darkness in the middle of the night it looks so beautiful when the darkness is at its maximum and you see the the chandrama the moon whole moon looks so beautiful said so ram looks like that sama anana ram it just looks like that moon very cooling is not compared to sun is compared to moon because the effulgence of moon is so cooling and so soothing so raka chandra sama anana rama and his smile is so beautiful that if even if somebody is suffering is as big as the ocean still one smile of lord ram can evaporate all the sufferings even if they are as big as oceans that's what they say so beautiful was lord ram in fact um, i was hearing i'm just forgetting the name of that acharya and he made a very beautiful uh, statement he said lord ram he looks exactly like lord ram because he said we can't compare lord ram with anybody so lord ram looks like lord ram that's it how do you compare him with anybody else I mean, he's so and especially there's one uh, commentary given by a tamil um, poet and uh, his ramayan is um, is among one of the authorized ramayan the kamban ramayan so they call him kambar kamban or whatever because there are very few ramayans like adhyatma ramayan or valmiki ramayan or kambans ramayan so certain are like authorized so this is one of the authorized ramayan because when when he wrote the ramayan if you have been to sri rangam temple you will see there is behind the temple there is a narsimha dev temple you have to climb few steps so after completing his ramayan he presented it to lord narsimha dev and then narsimha dev spoke out from the dt form and he said yeah it's a good one i approve it it's correct whatever you have stated so his ramayan was authorized by narsimha dev in ranga kshetra in sri rangam so he writes a very beautiful uh, thing in his kamban ram and he says um anybody who saw lord ram's eyes <clears throat> they simply kept looking at his eyes and if you ask them have you seen lord ram's nose they say uh, i couldn't i was just stuck at eyes and if somebody is looking at lord ram's shoulders and you ask them have you seen lord ram's face uh, well sorry i couldn't my eyes were stuck at his shoulder uh, i i haven't i haven't seen an opportunity to i haven't got an opportunity to see his face yet i'm still at shoulder so i mean every limb of his body was so beautiful so beautiful and then he says that like that he explains about every part of his body and then he says anybody who sees lord ram's lotus feet would simply surrender their life to him immediately without any anything else to think about so that was the beauty of lord um, ram um, that's why you see um, in rupa goswami he says in the i think it's lalita in one of his books he says that uh, when this 16000 um, you know this um, they were you know i think banasur these uh, ladies or this princess who were imprisoned by banasur the 16100 princess when they were released by krishna and when they saw krishna for the first time the first thing they told him is sorry 
Krishna says, sorry for what? He said, you are so beautiful. And all along when we were talking about you or discussing about you, we were always comparing you with the moon and we were comparing you with the lotus. And, I, and we think now it's such a mistake, such an embarrassment to you. Oh, you are much more beautiful than the lotus or the moon. And how come we made such silly comparisons? So we just, you know, begging forgiveness. So, of course, um, that doesn't mean that we stop comparing him with lotus or moon because um, that's the end of our vocabulary. That's that's the vocabulary we have. We don't have anything beyond this. In, in this material world, that's the most beautiful thing. So, we just compare. So, time and again, we see um, Lord's face and Lord's eyes and Lord's navel and Lord's lotus um, face is always compared to Lord's through a lotus. In fact, there is this... Um, beautiful verse, uh, very popular verse. I think in, in India, every household, the first thing they teach the children when they start speaking is this verse. Shantakaram bhujagashayanam padmanabham suresham vishvadharam gaganasadrisham meghavaranam shubhangam Lakshmi Kantam Kamalanayanam Yogi Pirthyanagam Yam Vande Vishnu Bhava Payaharam Sarvaloke Kanatham Comparing the Lord's eyes and everything to Kamalanayanam you know, beautiful, beautiful verse. So yes, we, <laughs> this is our vocabulary and we can't stop comparing him with um, lotus or uh, moon. But that was, that was Lord Ram's beauty. So Aganita Gunagana Bhushita Rama, he was endowed with unlimited qualities. He was desired by Sita Mata. His um, face was like the full moon. And then um, in the last uh, uh, line it says, Pitru Vakya Ashrita Kanana Rama. Oh, Kanana Rama is he's gone to the forest. Why? Pitruvakya. Just to keep up the promise of his father, he has Ashrita means uh, taken shelter. Shelter of what? Of forest. He has taken the shelter of forest just to uphold his father's promise. And this is very beautiful. Um, the Supreme Personality of Godhead who is shelter for everybody in this world, takes shelter of the forest just to uphold his father's um, word so this is this is very beautiful and then they are explaining about the beauty of lord ram in the beginning verses and then they say how he left for the forest and i was just thinking you know trying to get a connection here is that his beauty was not limited to favorable situations or conditions in life even when he was asked to go to the forest the, the smile still remains same I think that's one thing very special which we can learn from Lord Ram's pastimes is how he deals with reversals. I mean, even when, you know, in a situation where he was, ex see, I mean, he was expecting to be the regent prince and it was just going to happen shortly. I mean, in the morning he's all set and ready and after his Mangala Snanam, after taking the auspicious bath and he's about to, you know, going to be in the, the prince regent and then he's told that no, you have, you'll be banished for 14 years and he still has the same smile on his, uh, on his face, you know, there's no change in his expression. This is something because um, when you are expecting a pat and you get a slap, definitely there'll be some change of emotions so there'll be some kind of a feeling in your heart but the way lord ram reacts and um, that's something uh, so beautiful for us to learn and especially the fact that he doesn't blame anybody for that i mean at some point in our lives also when we become devotee during i mean over a period of time we do learn to forget and we do learn to forgive but there's ram lord ram is showing us another step in that in that journey of forgetting and forgiving, loving somebody who has been the cause of our sorrow, sorrow. Now that is something really special. One another step high. Okay, you forgive, but can you love them in the same way, or rather more, even though they, you know, practically you see that they are cause of your sorrow, because he doesn't blame Kaikai or he doesn't, you know, he's just. In fact, 
when this um, announcement happens we should see the way he deals with everybody in so positive way he, he when kaikai is already you know that ram is going to say something and then i'm going to attack him but he simply says so beautifully he says oh dear mother why didn't you tell me this directly i always thought that you loved me and you thought i'm your son and now you, you really behave like a stepmother by not telling this to me directly i would have been happy to go to the uh, forest uh, to please you why did you have to go through the go through father and when when he says that kaikai is completely disarmed you know and he just deals so beautifully with kaikai so that no more negativity is increased in the family and everybody is okay and then when he deals with dasharath also he makes it very short and crisp he says all right father i'm ready to go so i don't think i should delay this further and i am um, just please allow me to leave the room now i need to make preparations and and of course dashrath is still crying and he's telling so many things and of course at at that point somebody may feel that is ram emotionless because he's not even expressing his emotion and there is not even one tear or he doesn't even say oh my dear father i'm going to miss you too he doesn't say that because sometimes the lo- the love is conveyed not by expressing your feelings sometimes the love is conveyed by hiding your feelings or by hiding your emotions you know it, it, it according to time situation and circumstance and here he knows that this will be like a you know sometimes you go to the doctor the long injections are really hard i mean short injections are better just prick and finished but if they're long injections where well, they have draw your blood or oh, it's a little bit so that's what lord ram is doing he doesn't want to elongate the situation any more and doesn't want to cause more pain to dashrath and he simply says oh my dear father i need to make a move now i need to get things ready I, i'm going and he just you know tries to finish it up and then the way he deals with sita and then you know the way she, he explains her okay i need to go to the forest and may you should take care of my parents and then of course uh, sita mata convinces him that she will go along and then the way he deals with lakshman because lakshman gets all angry and he says oh our father has been infatuated with the love of his a uh, young wife and this is what he did and lord rama immediately corrects him and says it's not infatuation it's obligation you should have seen how our father was in grief when he said this to me I mean, and he never said that when been in this whole situation when mother kaikai told me this you should have seen it's not infatuation it's obligation you shouldn't you shouldn't say this about our father and he immediately corrects him and then and then when lakshman says okay fine not to criticize dasrath and he starts criticizing kai kai then immediately ram stops him also hey mother kai kai loves me you know her love is like the flow of ganga and immediately uh, lakshman ask okay her flow is like ganga so why did ganga become dry overnight why suddenly you know she wants to <laughs> throw you to the forest and he says look this is what this is what we need to understand you said why ganga became dry overnight how can ganga become dry she still loves me but if in spite of her loving me so much if she has asked me to go to the forest that means this is destiny this is destiny here where the role of destiny comes otherwise why would she say that she loves me so much and i love her so much and we are all such a beautiful family and if this has happened then this is definitely the role of destiny and he just tries to shift the focus you know from kai kai to something else so oh, destiny is the one that that's the you know cause of our trouble and then the way he deals with the with the different courtiers when they are all upset about this whole thing this is he says no i'm very happy imagine i have an opportunity to now go for 14 years in the forest and associate with all these great saintly people and i will hear scriptures and i'll get this chance to meet the sages oh i have got this opportunity to do something that will please my stepmother oh i have got this opportunity to be a play a main role in you know in upholding my father's promise oh what a privilege oh i will get this opportunity to see in my lifetime my younger brother becoming king oh what an opportunity i have got and he's just going on and on and the courtiers are surprised how can somebody be so positive even this kind of situation and everything is you know showing in such a positive way and i thought this was really beautiful i mean lesson for our life too that whenever we are um I mean, when we are confronted by, uh, you know, this kind of reversals in our life, we should also try to shift our focus. But of course, when easy said than done, um, devotees may question, okay, 
we can shift our focus but the problems are practical and real i mean they are real problems even if you try to shift your focus you need to sort it sort them out they are standing right in front of your face yes but at least one thing we can do is the mind has this habit of exaggerating every small problem in our life in a very big way it magnifies at least if we think positive and we shift our focus and then at least we can stop the mind from exaggerating the problem and presenting the problem as it is and not making it more bigger than it actually is at least that much we can do so that's one thing and of course when we take shelter of geeta and we take shelter of bhagavatam then one more thing that we know is it's not only we who are suffering everybody is suffering this world is a place of misery it's just that different people are suffering different flavors maybe you have a strawberry and they have a vanilla but everybody has their flavor their flavor of suffering so this is one wisdom we get from geeta and and most important is when we take shelter of scriptures at least we start looking at things from multi life perspective this is not my only life and that i have lived before and i may have to take birth again and there are so many things happening in my life which i don't know you know what karma i did previously so we start lo- looking at things from multi life perspective and that helps us to get little bit calmer and and face the situation or whatever problem we face in our life so i thought this was some beautiful life lessons which we can learn from lord rama's life so how he was smiling and he just accepts it we'll go to the next uh, verse priya guha vinive dita pad rama tikshalita nija mrudu pad rama bharadvaj mukha andakarama chitrakuta driniketan rama 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 jay raja ram 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 jay sita ram so uh, here he says okay it's all done he just goes uh, you know with his wife and lakshman and they are now on their way to the forest and we know whole past time of how the whole ayodhya walks with lord ram and then somehow lord ram cheats them he asks sumanta to this is similar to the similar to what akrura does to the gopis you know the gopis are crying and akrura takes krishna away and this is what happens with the ayodhya vasis they are all fast asleep and sumantra just takes away lord ram and then they uh, meet guha so the first line says priya guha priya means uh, beloved guha is lord's friend so he says priya guha vinivedita pad rama o oh, guha becomes one way very happy because he is seeing his friend lord ram and he mrutupada um, he just um, he just washes the feet of lord ram and he's so happy oh you have come and um, now for this 14 years my palace is yours you take care you be here i'll i'll just serve you like a servant he's so happy and one way he is very sad the way the whole situation has unfolded and um, so when guha sees lord ram he just comes with uh, all you know rajaboga and prasadam and and every facility and he says you know please come and take rest in my Uh, my palace whatever palace he must be having as a forest dweller whatever situation so lord ram says no i can't because i made a promise you know that i will be living under the you know trees and where bark of the tree and then what lord ram does is he just takes some gum from the uh, tree bark and then he mats his hair because if they have to stay in the forest for 14 years they don't have the right things to wash and all those facilities so he simply just mats their hair and he says i can't stay in your palace and i'm just going to sleep underneath this tree for this night and then i i need to walk further so then goa says okay at least accept the food that i brought and ram says no as a forest dweller i just need to depend on roots and fruits and you just better get me some roots and fruits so then goa gets some roots and fruits and he becomes very sad seeing this whole situation where lord ram is sleeping under a tree and mother sita who is like the you know queen of the whole world mother lakshmi she is suffering like this so he just is is very sad in this whole situation now what happens um, when you love somebody too much then you you 
start becoming a little insecure you know about them or or rather you want to just protect them from every danger now lakshman loves lord ram so much and goha loves lord ram so much so they both want to protect so whole night they both don't sleep and then of course it's very funny how lakshman thinks that goha may be you know with bharat and he may try to harm lord ram and guha is thinking that god knows what is there in lakshman's mind maybe he just accompanied because he wants to kill ram maybe and help bharat so both um, doubt each other and you know whole night they are trying to save lord ram from each other and finally at one point lakshman starts crying and guha starts crying and both are crying because they are not able to see this situation of lord ram and sita and that's where they start talking and when they start talking then they both understand that both are great devotees of the lord and they love the lord and i thought this was also very special that you know unless and until a devotee opens their mouth you can never judge them you can never judge them by the way they look or they dress or they walk or the clothes they wear the only way to judge or or rather to know somebody is when they open their mouth when they talk about krishna then we understand what's the level of that devotee we may have so many misconceptions in our mind but when they because um, um when you speak or when you talk it reflects your consciousness or, or what kind of person what is the level of your devotion here when guha starts talking and lakshman starts talking then they both understand oh, yes you know they yeah he loves ram yeah he loves ram so that's how they um yeah so that's how the hearing is very important that that we hear from uh, devotees and um, and what you do or how you behave and what you talk um, is your is what is there inside like you see you know during provocating situations the real you comes out i i, I don't know if i've told this story here in this forum any time of how once there's this one man who comes to akbar and he's multilingual and he challenges you can't find out what's my mother tongue and birbal says it will just take me 24 hours i'll let you know by tomorrow morning what is his mother tongue and everybody is surprised because till now nobody could do that and what birbal simply does is next day morning when this scholar goes for his nature call he simply puts water on him and at that moment the scholar you know he he gets so angry and he curses he he uses curse word in his mother tongue so immediately by 10 o'clock when they are ready for the court duties birbal says oh this is his mother tongue and they say how did you know that so he said during the provocating situation the real color comes out you know he just curses in his mother tongue so um during those kind of situations you know the real you comes out and here lakshman and bharat and uh, sorry and guha and all they are crying and they are you know and they are showing their sympathy and love for lord ram and paraspar they are doing this kathayantas chamam nityam you know what the devotees do whenever they meet they just talk about krishna they talk about lord ram so he talks about him. and um, when you talk about lord uh then the um okay now i don't want to get into that because that's a big story and it's already 8:15 and at least i need to complete this ayodhya kan okay so where we were priya guha vinavedita pad rama so guha is very happy that he has got opportunity to serve at the same time he is very sad he does uh, feet washing and lord ram takes rest uh, there and then um, comes um, a bharadvaj mukha an- ananda karama oh lord ram uh, because lord ram has come to the forest Bharadwaj Muni becomes very happy. It gives him lot of pleasure when he sees Lord Ram face to face. I mean, he's been meditating on him and he's been worshiping him, but now he gets the opportunity to see him. And then um, Chitra Kuta Adri Niketan Rama. Niketan is house. Chitra Kuta is a place. So Lord Ram, he's been, you know, he keeps. moving in the forest and every time that he meets some sages he spends a little time with them and hears some scriptures take their blessings take some fruits and roots and then he asks them where should i go next and then they guide him and then he goes next and then he goes and that's what he keeps doing all these years so when he reaches to bharadwaj muni's ashram so he says where do i go next you know and then bharadwaj muni guides him okay now you go here there is this beautiful place called chitrakoot and maybe you should uh, make your hut there and you should stay there so like that lord ram keeps um, moving we'll go to the uh, next uh, line दशरथ सतत चिंतरा कई कई तन्या 
ಅರ್ಪಿತ ರಾಮ ವಿರಚಿತ ನಿಜ ಪಿತ ಕರ್ಮಕ ರಾಮ ಭರತಾರ್ಪಿತ ನಿಜ ಪಾದುಕ ರಾಮ 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 ಜಯ ರಾಜ ರಾಮ 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 ಜಯ ಸೀತಾರಾಮ ಸೊ ವೈಲ್ ಹೀಸ್ ಮೂವಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಫಾರೆಸ್ಟ್ he is remem- remembering his father dasharatha santat chintita rama he is constantly thinking hope my father is fine is okay i just left him because um, when this whole thing was going on this whole episode and well kaike is asking lord ram that you know this is what i have asked from your father um dasharath maharaj was was in complete grief and he was blabbering so many things he was telling why not you stage a coup lord you know to lord ram he was saying rama why not you stage a coup and just attack me and take away my kingdom then whatever promise i have made to kai kai doesn't stand good or then he says okay fine if you don't want to do that just arrest me you know is okay if you don't want to do that okay fine take all the wealth away take all the wealth of ayodhya and then you go and live wherever you want to comfortably or at least take all the ayodhya vasis with you or okay at least stay one more day back at least one more day so that i can serve you or i can you know, make sure that you are comfortable okay you do this okay you do that so many things he keeps telling and lord ram and time and again when he is in the forest is just remembering my poor old father he was saying so many things i just hope he is okay so this is what had happened because you know when when lord ram left there were so many things that dashrath was trying to say and suggest but lord ram does not listen and he just starts walking and he doesn't even look back you know like i i was just telling previously that he just he just didn't want to give so much pain to his father so he thought the quicker it's over maybe my father will forget and he'll keep going but it doesn't happen dashrath keeps saying ram 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 and he just falls down and then um, when kai kai lifts him up and then dashrath is reminded of this past time he says oh my god now i know why this has happened to me because when i was a young boy and i was just you know trying to kill some you know animals and i was trying to master different um, war techniques and i was learning this particular mastery where i can shot an arrow just by hearing the sound and while i was practicing this in the deep forest i heard i heard a sound of a deer drinking water and just by hearing i had put an arrow but alas i didn't knew when i went close i came to know it was not a deer it was a boy called shravan kumar and he was just taking some water for his blind parents whom he was taking on a holy pilgrimage and you know then shravan kumar when he left his body he just gave me this pot of water and said please give it to my blind parents and when he took this pot to those uh, parents of shravan kumar and he just said what happened by mistake you know they were so upset with him and they cursed him said we are suffering now in separation of our of our child of our son and and we are dying and same thing will happen to you you will you know face the face the same situation in your life you will suffer separation of your son and the, and then in their uh, shravan kumar's parents after finishing the rituals of their son's you know body with all the death rituals they die so he says he shares this with his queen uh, kaushalya the elder one he says this is what has happened you know whatever i did i just got it back so he was suffering a lot so lord ram is just reminded of that you know oh dasharatha santata chintita rama he is just worrying oh my father alas how easy kai kai tanya arpit rama kai kai tanya is bharat maharaj so we know what what was this suffering because lord ram was banished and uh, kai kai is you know one thing that i was just i just i was just doing a research kai kai is from ukraine yeah i mean now this war is going on in ukraine so i'm just reminded because that place where kai kasha raja was ruling that's that's a present day ukraine and she was from ukraine and um, uh, and then the next line it says um, this all things that are done by kai kai but finally what um, bharata does uh, he doesn't want this uh, kingdom and all and he just uh, you know comes to lord ram and takes his uh, wooden slipper so this is what he's explaining in very brief lakshmana acharya the whole thing what happened that lord ram is thinking about what all you know, happened in the past few days and finally how bharat comes to uh, fetch ram, uh, ram back so this is very wonderful in fact um, 
Lord Ram's qualities were so sweet and so nice that even Kaikasha Raja, Kaikai's um, father, though he had made an initial condition with Dasharatha that if you marry my daughter, the son from her womb should become the future king. But Lord Ram's behavior was so sweet that even Kaikasha Raja forgot about it. He sort of forget it, let Ram be the king. He's like our son. And even Kaikai, actually Kaikai was a, was a noble lady. It's just all the pastime of the Lord where she was given this role. Otherwise, she used to love Lord Ram so much. In fact, um, when Lord Ram gets married to Mother Sita and when he when he comes, you know, Kaikai's uh, Kanaka Bhavan, in the palace of Kaikai was called Kanaka Bhavan, and he comes there to take her blessings. And that was Kanaka Bhavan was Kaikai's favorite palace, which was specially made for her, you know, gift by Dashrath. So when they go inside to take the blessings of Kaikai, and Mother Kaikai says, Oh, Lord Ra, uh, uh, Mother Kaikai says, My dear son Ram, you have made me so happy. You know, you, you've got this beautiful daughter in law for me. What gift can I give you? Oh, maybe this bhavan I can give you. So then and there, she just walks out. She said, This bhavan is yours. You stay here with your wife. And she just walks out. I mean, that much she loved Ram. Whatever was her, you know, very near and dear to her, she was ready to give it to Lord Ram. In fact, I've been to that place in um, Ayodhya, this this particular place called Kanaka Bhavan. It's indeed beautiful, very huge and huge palace. I mean, very beautiful place, Kanaka Bhavan. So um, that much affection she had for Lord Ram. But of course, we all know that association of uh, mantra, how um, that's why um, we should give charity of our wealth, but we should not give our years and our time and our mind to anybody indiscriminately. We should be so careful because sometimes they just come and just poison us and and just like mantra drew um, you know drove Rama out of Ayodhya. They just drive Rama out of our hearts and they just drive our our devotion out. So we have to be so careful. But the only thing is um those days, it's so e it was easy to find out who was Asura and who was demon. Nowadays, we cannot find out because externally they all, all look sweet and nice. Only thing, the, there are demoniac qualities inside and sometimes it may, it may be even in a form of a devotee who so-called looks very nice at the outset having Kanti and Tilak and all but um, may not have such divine qualities and maybe their association is not very healthy for us so even when we are associating with devotees we have to be so picky on whom are we associating and whose association is elevating us and whose association is um, not inspiring us in krishna consciousness and we should be so careful so um, this is what happens just like a small leak of water and we are so careful to immediately put an m seal or some kind of a seal and make sure that the water doesn't we should be so careful that somewhere a small leak and somewhere a small, um, um, you know, year to some words may actually destroy our bhakti lata, which we are so carefully um, nurturing. So one should be so careful. So Kaikai Kai could not realize that mantra is having her personal agenda. In fact, anybody who is criticizing anybody has a personal agenda, for sure. They, they, I mean, criticism, they don't do it selflessly. There is nothing like selfless criticism. There is a personal agenda if somebody is criticizing somebody and we should be so careful. So, um, when the mistake Kaikai did is she didn't clarify with Dashrat because when Mantra told her that, look, you know, Dashrat will treat you like a maid servant once Ram becomes king, she could have actually go and clarify with Dashrat. Is it true? Are you going to make me maid servant? And there would the matter would have ended. But she didn't clarify. And I thought that was one good lesson for us also that we can just clarify things when we are in doubt and that will make things. So anyway, whatever happened, happened. But at least Bharat took a step, went there to Chitrakoot and tried to get Lord Ram back to Ayodhya. So we can also do that, at least make an endeavor to get Lord Ram back into our hearts if at all he's been drove away by our anarthas or by wrong association, we can still try to get him back. So so they all go, Bharat and all the three queens, and they all now go to Chitrakoot and they because now Dashrath has left body 
and Kaika is repentant when she realizes that um, Bharat does not crave for kingdom and she has made a mistake and Bharat is not happy and Shatrughna is not happy. So now they all decide to go and the whole Ayodhya goes and they want to go and get Ram back. So when they go there and they reach there, that night uh, the mothers, uh, they've been served by Mother Sita. So she's a daughter-in-law. So she does Pada Seva for um, Kai Kai. And Kai Kai is telling Mother Sita that, Oh, I feel so wretched. Maybe I should just die, you know. And Mother Sita says, No, Mother, please don't say that. It's not your mistake. It's just destiny. You know, it things just happen. We have we have no um, ill feeling for you. Please remove these thoughts from your heart. And then Sita Mother goes and does Pada Seva for uh, Sumitra, the mother of uh, Shatrugna, and then a mother of uh, Lakshman. And uh, she says, uh, she asks Mother Sita, how is my son serving you? So Mother Sita says, oh, wonderful. He's doing such amazing service. And uh, she becomes immediately so happy. She says, oh, my son has withhold my, um, you know, my pride now. I'm happy. Otherwise, I would have felt useless. You know, I'm not able to do anything for you and Lord Ram. And at least my um, son is serving you well. Um, actually, Lakshman did such an amazing, amazing service. In fact, uh, for, for the 14 years that he served Lord Ram, he never slept even once. In fact, when Nidra Devi came and said, this is not fair, everybody has to sleep. So he says, just give me this 14 years time and I promise you, you know, once I'm done with this and the day Lord Ram sits on the um, Simhasan, on the uh, throne and he becomes the king of Ayodhya, that day I'll sleep. So Nidra Devi says, but it doesn't work like that. You know, what am I supposed to do now? Because your quota of sleep I have to give you. And then Lakshman says, you can go to my wife to Ayodhya and you can ask her to accept my quota of sleep. So I read somewhere that Urmila, she slept in day and night accepting Lakshman's quota of sleep and then doing her quota of sleep. And then finally on the day when they win the war and they come back to Ayodhya and Lord Ram is enthroned and Lakshman is holding the umbrella just behind Lord Ram. And that time Nidra Devi says, hey, look, uh, gentleman, your 14 years are over. And, and she just enters and Lakshman is sleepy and the umbrella which is holding slips from his hand and then he decides, oh, I think I need to go and take rest. So he just goes and takes rest. And, and there is this very interesting um, very interesting pastime with the um, Agatsya Muni. He just comes and asks Lord Ram that I have been contemplating about this one particular thing, uh, Lord Ram, in your Leela, and which is just not, you know, I'm not able to accept it. And Lord Ram says, What is that? He said, I know that Meghanath, or you call him Indrajit, he was supposed to be killed by a person who does not sleep, who does not eat, and who does not see the face of a woman for 14 years or whatever and how come Lakshman could kill him because Lakshman was with you so I'm sure he must have seen Sita and definitely he must have slept and he must have eaten so how did he manage to kill Indrajit and then um, Lord Ram says well I, I'm not sure about this I need to speak to Lakshman so they call him so then Lakshman says yeah I have fulfilled all these three conditions I haven't slept and then he explains to Lord Ram how he made a deal with Nidra Devi and he actually didn't sleep for 14 years so Lord Ram says, okay, that makes sense. But what about eating? I know you ate because when you used to bring fruits for me from the forest, I used to divide it into three three you know portions, give something to Sita and then to you and then for myself. So I know you have eaten. So Lakshman says, you never told me eat this. You said keep this. So I never ate. I just kept it. So Lord Ram said, I, I I'm not able to I'm, I'm not able to believe it then Lakshman says I can prove it I said how will you prove it he said everywhere that you gave me I didn't know what to do with those fruits so I just dig and kept them inside my tunir you know the place where you keep your arrows and I can still get them so then Lakshman climbs on Hanuman and then they, they go to those places where they were staying and they get all the fruits back which Lord Ram had given for all the 14 years and they come back and they put it in front of Agatsya Muni. Now Agatsya Muni, um, the smart sage, he says count it 
14 into 365 you know 365 days into 14 years into whatever morning evening whatever he must have given and they just actually counted it and they said uh yeah there is something less seven days you know seven days uh, fruits are less so that means you ate then lakshman says no i'll i'll prove it i didn't those seven days you never gave me anything to eat so lord ram says how is that possible i gave you each and every day he said no you didn't the day the three mothers and bharat came to visit us and they gave us the news that father died we were so sad we didn't eat that day and the day sita was abducted kidnapped we didn't eat that day and the day ravan brought the maya sita and showing us that he's cutting the throat of sita we were so upset then we didn't eat that day and the day ahiravan took us to patal loka we didn't eat that day and then the day nagapasha meghadoot he just bounded us by the nagapasha that day we both were unconscious so we didn't eat that day and then the day um, i was unconscious and hanuman goes and gets sanjeevani you didn't eat that day because i was unconscious and the day we won the war we were so happy and that day we didn't eat anything so see you see this seven days you didn't give me anything so i didn't eat So Lord Ram says all right that also makes sense you didn't eat and you didn't sleep but you definitely saw Sita because we three were living together you know so he said no I didn't I didn't and I'll prove that so how will you prove that he said you remember when Ravana kidnapped mother Sita and then she did throw some jewelries you know and on the ground and these were collected by the monkeys and that was with sugriva and when sugriv gave us that um, piece of cloth which had all these jewelries and you showed it to me i uh, you know a uh, lakshman does this not belong to your you know uh, sister in law does this not belong to sita and i told you brother i haven't seen her face so i don't know if this jewelry belongs to her but only thing i can tell you is the jewelry which she wears on her feet because that anklets because every day i touch her feet so those jewelries i can recognize because i haven't seen her face ever so then i prove you i never saw mother sita i just touched her feet so then agatsya says oh yes now i understand why you were able to kill uh, indrajit so lakshman did amazing amazing service so when mother sita is um, doing pada seva you know kaika is asking her some questions and then mother suman sumitra is asking questions and then kaushalya says does not lord ram remember me then sita says no mother he remembers you every day then why doesn't he want to come back to ayodhya then he says no no but we need to keep our you know the father's promise so all these discussions are going on and there are intellectual discussions because bharat has come all armed so he has brought all these sages of ayodhya and all the kul gurus and the rishis and they're all uh, giving different arguments to lord ram no i mean the father has left his body so you should you are like a father to bharat and you can't orphan him and you come back so lots of discussions are going on now sita devi's father janak maharaj is also considered to be a very big scholar you know cuz he you know, we, we hear about the ashtavakra gita and we hear about how he used to always invite different sages to his palace and he was highly uh, i mean uh, uh, he had lot of good knowledge of scriptures and he was very smart so lord ram says all right now janak maharaj also comes there so lord ram says all right now this discussions has been going on for hours now let janak maharaj decide so let's let's all sleep over this and tomorrow morning we decide so janak maharaj is thinking whole night whole night how to sort this out so next day morning he asks bharat do you really love your brother say, yes i love him and then he asks lord ram do you really love bharat he say yes i love him So then, um, Dashrath Maharaj says, "All right, now Ma, my decision is that Lord Ram should accept the kingdom of Ayodhya." And then immediately, Lord Ram says, "Done. Whatever you say, because you are my father-in-law, and uh, I respect you, and your decision I'll accept. So I accept. I'll be the king of uh, Ayodhya, and I accept it. I accept Ayodhya." So everybody now becomes very happy that now Lord Ram is going to come back. So now then he says his second sentence. He says, "So, um, Bharat, do you love me?" He said, "Yes, brother. I can do anything for you." So he said, "Can you please uh, take care of my kingdom for fourteen years till I come back, and then when I come back, I'll take it." Now they didn't have anything else to say. So Bharat says, "Okay, I accept it." So then he just accepts uh, the kingdom from Lord Ram. But now the difference is. now it's not bharat's kingdom it's ram's kingdom and now bharat is taking care and that makes a lot of difference so now bharat is happy so he says now you give me your um, so that's the last word bharat arpit nija padukarama he says give me your sandals so that i can understand that 
I am a servant. And everybody in Ayodhya understands that I am just a servant and you are the boss. So your padukas, your footwear, your sandal will sit on the, on the throne and I will simply serve under your direction. And that is so beautiful. That is why you see the name Bharat also. The Acharyas give such beautiful commentary. They say, Bharavahati iti Bharataha. The name of Bharat is one who has taken the burden on his, you know, on his shoulders. Now, what is the burden? The burden is to have a kingdom which is bereft of Ram. Anything that is bereft of Lord is a burden. Just like when you have to swim across an ocean or when you have to swim, the best thing you do is you wear light clothes. You don't tie yourself with a big rock, otherwise you will drown. But in this material world, when we buy material possessions or increase our material Aishwarya, what we are simply doing is tying ourselves to rocks and big rock and bigger rock and a bigger rock. And then we also want to swim across this material ocean and it doesn't happen and just we drown. So now what do we do? We warn those rocks and we also want to swim. So then what we need to do is we just need to write Ram on that rock. Then the rock will float and then we can float also. So that means whatever material possessions that we have, we just need to have Lord Ram on it. That means we need to be Krishna conscious and use them in Krishna's service. Then those rocks are no more those heavy rocks which will drown us, but they will keep us afloat. So Bhar Vahati Bharataha because he had to take care of a kingdom which didn't have Ram. So, but he took this service uh, to please Lord Ram. And then you see in the you know, meaning of the word Lakshman also I say, Lakshman Lakshmi Sampanna, one who is having lot of wealth. Somebody will sing, but where was the wealth? The poor fellow, he was also just moving from one forest to another with Lord Ram, where is the wealth? But the Acharya says, no, he was the most wealthiest person because he had the seva of Lord Ram with him and that's the greatest wealth of anybody. So Lakshman Lakshmi Sampanna, oh, he has so much wealth, they say. So, uh, in fact, when Valmiki was narrating this um, Ramayana to his disciples, at one juncture they asked, Guruji, who is greater? Is it Lakshman or Bharat? And then there's a big philosophical discussion. And then finally, Valmiki says, well, both are great. One did Vapu Seva and one did Vani Seva. One did personal Seva of the Lord and one did Seva of the Lord by by following his directions, you know, to please him. So, in fact, Seva in separation is more harder because when Lakshman does Seva, at least he gets, he gets a reciprocation. He can see the beautiful face of the Lord, the smile of the Lord. He can talk to the Lord. He can see the Lord. But Bharat had to do it in separation. He can't see the Lord. He can't hear his sweet words. He can't. But he still kept doing it. You know? And that's so, uh, so beautiful. In fact, many times I just think in my mind that, um, you know, when devotees complain that I don't get association of my spiritual master, of my mentors or my counselors or my siksha gurus and hardly get any association. How should we keep ourselves inspired? And I just wondered that Prabhupada disciples, they hardly had association of Prabhupada. I mean, the whole moment was just 10, 11 years and Prabhupada just did everything. Now imagine even the devotee with the, the senior, 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 most devotee must have got how many years, let's say, you know, of Prabhupada's association, 66, so 77, he left, so maybe like 10 years, what more in they may have. And some of them had maybe 10 days and some of them maybe had one day and maybe somebody had just one line conversation with Prabhupada, maybe somebody had just one look of Prabhupada, maybe just Prabhupada looked at him or maybe somebody just had like, here is your name and somebody didn't even have that. Maybe a letter diksha with your name in your envelope. But still, after Prabhupada left, you know, this world in 1977, the rest of 40, 50 years, they have dedicated their life for that 15 minutes of conversation that they had with their guru or that five minutes of talk or that one line of his or that one word. I mean, so much love you need to have for a person to do something even after he is not present in front of you but you still do something and you you know to please him and carry forward his mission that's really big dedication so i mean bharat was not getting any reciprocation and uh, he is somewhere in nandi gram for 14 years he doesn't have any news and there is no whatsapp and there are no facebook uh, updates to see which forest lord ram is today and and he still has to go on and that's something really great so um 
ಯಾ ಸೊ ಭರತ ಅರ್ಪಿತ ನಿಜ ಪಾದುಖ ರಾಮ ಸೊ ಫೈನಲಿ ಏನೋ ಭರತ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಣ್ ಯಾ ಇನ್ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ದ ನೇಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಶತ್ರುಘ್ನ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ದಿ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಸೇಸ್ ಶತ್ರುಘ್ನ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ಹಸ್ ಡಿಫೀಟೆಡ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಶತ್ರುಸ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಎನಿಮೀಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಂಬಡಿ ಮೇ ಸೇ ಓ ರಿಯಲಿ ವಾಟ್ ಎನಿಮೀಸ್ ಡಿಡ್ ಯು ಡಿಫೀಟ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಐ ಮೀನ್ ಹಿ ಮೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಫಾಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಮೆನಿ ಎನಿಮೀಸ್ ವಿ ಡೋಂಟ್ ನೋ ವಿ ಜಸ್ ಹರ್ಡ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಟ್ ಲವನ್ ಆಸುರ ಆರ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಇನ್ ಮಧುವನ್ ಮೀನ್ ವಿ ಗೋ ಟು ವೃಂದಾವನ್ ವಿ ಹಿಯರ್ ದಟ್ ಪಾಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಬಟ್ ರಿಯಲಿ ಸೊ ಬಟ್ ದೆನ್ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಸೀಸ್ ನೋ ವಿ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ರಿಯಲ್ ಶತ್ರುಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ದಿ ಶತ್ರುಸ್ ಔಟ್ ಸೈಡ್ ದಿ ದಿ ಅಸುರಾಸ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಡೀಮನ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಶತ್ರುಸ್ ಇನ್ ಸೈಡ್ ದಿ ಅನರ್ಥಾಸ್ ಕಾಮ ಕ್ರೋಧ ಮೋಹ ಮದ ಮತ್ಸರೆ ಹಿ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಫಾಟ್ ವಿತ್ ದೆಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇ ಡಿಫೀಟೆಡ್ ದೆಮ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ಸ್ ವೈ ಶತ್ರುಘ್ನ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಸ್ಪೆಷಲ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇ ಡಿಫೀಟೆಡ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಶತ್ರುಸ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ಸೋ ಹಂಬಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ರೆಂಡರಿಂಗ್ ಸರ್ವಿಸ್ ಟು ಭಾರತ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಚ್ ಅ ಸ್ವೀಟ್ ಸೋಲ್ ಸೊ ಭಾರತ್ ವಾಸ್ ಬೇರಿಂಗ್ ಎ ಬರ್ಡನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಣ್ ವಾಸ್ ಆಲ್ ವೆಲ್ದಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಶತ್ರುಘ್ನ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಡಿಫೀಟೆಡ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಎನಿಮೀಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ನೇಮ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ರಾಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ದೇ ಸೆಡ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ರಾಮ್ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ಗಿವ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಲೆಷರ್ ಟು ಎವ್ರಿಬಡಿ ಇಸ್ ಅ ರಿಸರ್ವ್ ಯುವರ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ಲೆಷರ್ ಇನ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಹರ್ಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಅ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನಾವ್ ನಾಟ್ ಎಬಲ್ ಟು ಗ್ಯಾದರ್ ಮೈ ಸೋರ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ದೇ ವಾಸ್ ಸಂಬಡಿ ಯು ನೋ ವೆರಿ ಫನಿಲಿ ಗಿವ್ ಅನ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲನೇಷನ್ ಸಂವೇ ದಟ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ರಾಮ್ you know the kind of pleasure that he gives is something like you just open a tap of water and and if the water is free flowing in high speed that is lord ram you know that kind of pleasure and the devotees of lord ram are like the tap of water which is giving out honey and then he said that and the sadhakas are like those tap of waters which sometimes flow high and sometimes no water comes out because sometimes high you know nirjala and 64 rounds and sometimes even two rounds four rounds or watching a india pakistan cricket match not sure it, like a pendulum goes one extreme to another never know what happens with the sadhakas sometimes in great high mood and sometimes completely down and they said mayavadis are like those tap which you open the tap and no water comes out and the metallistic people are those you open the tap and murky dirty water comes out it was very funny explanation i'm just not able to get my source what was that and you know the explanation of how uh, you know lord ram is a reservoir of pleasure and the the moment the word rama is spoken it gives so much pleasure in everybody's heart so um yeah so this is what happened with bharata and finally um bharat takes that wooden sandals and then he uh, goes back to nandigram he does not enter ayodhya he just stays uh, that place is still there nandigram it's a beautiful beautiful place and there's a nice temple we couple of years ago we went there on a yatra and then there is that beautiful place where bharat um, gives a tight embrace to hanuman and that uh, vigraha is there you can still see that place in ayodhya um actually it's easy to give up our life for somebody whom we love but what is difficult is to live our life according and you know, live our life in a way that will please that loved one that's more difficult so bharat actually did it he just lived his life in the way that will please lord ram it would have been easy for him actually to die that would have been more easy just like the gopis say it would be actually easy for us to leave our bodies but the fact that we are remaining alive just because we are worried that if if at all krishna comes back to vrindavan and he sees that we are dead uh, we are not alive he'll feel bad so just to make him happy we are keeping ourselves alive in fact when lord rama banished mother sita um then wal yeah wal yeah she was in valmiki muni's ashram and then valmiki he tells lord ram that mother sita was hardly taking you know few morsels of rice just to keep herself alive because she thought if lord ram at all summons me back and he comes to know that sita is not alive anymore he'll feel hurt so just to make sure that he doesn't get hurt she just kept herself alive so yeah that's that's more difficult that when you love somebody and you somehow you know want to do something to live our life in a way that will please that person is more difficult than <coughs> giving up their life and that is the highest stage in a in a devotional life where we want to serve and please guru and krishna with no conditions apply i mean whatever way that will please them um by coming out of our comfort zone so um so with this we actually end the ayodhya kanda and i'll go another 15 minutes and i'll end it here 
with one verse from aranya kanda and then we'll end it and we'll continue the rest of it tomorrow danda kavana jana pavan rama dushta viradha vinashan rama sarbhang sutikshan arachit rama agatsya anugrah vardhit rama राम राम जय राजा राम 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 जय सीता राम सो येस नाउ यू नो देर इज नो मोर चांस ऑफ लॉर्ड राम गोइंग बैक भरत हैज ट्राइड इज बेस्ट सो नाउ लॉर्ड राम लीव्स दैट प्लेस ऑल्सो एंड ही वॉक्स मोर फर्दर देर आर थ्री प्लेसेज दैट लॉर्ड राम वॉज दे आई मीन देर आर मेनी प्लेसेज दैट ही वॉज दे बट प्रोमिनेंटली चित्रकूट एंड देन दंडकारण्य and then panchavati and then from panchavati sita devi gets um, kidnapped and then they go to lanka and then they go back to ayodhya so that's how the whole theme is so now lord ram has gone deeper so you know he goes to dandaka dandakaranya comes down down south and dandaka vana jana pavan rama oh lord ram is is purifying everybody purifying places because he's just walking and going everywhere so all those places are becoming holy places is purifying the places purifying the people because the people are looking at now how did people come in picture here even though they are in forest sometimes they're just walking alongside and there are so many villages which are connected to those forest so now those villages they sometimes come maybe to take some wood from the forest or something like that and then they see oh there are two beautiful young boys and then there's a pretty young woman accompanying them and they just go back to the village and call people and then they all come and they're all tribal people living you know maybe the borders of the the forest and they come and see wow so beautiful couple where are they going and they 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 bring some fruits and they bring some water from the well and they bring so many things for lord ram and then lord ram and lakshman and sita they're just sitting under a tree and then they just talk to them and that way lord ram is purifying people purifying places and making himself accessible so many jeevas and that's what he wanted to do paritranaya sadhu naam bina chaach dushkritam he just wants to um, help the sadhus he wants to um, you know kill the demons he wants to protect his devotees he wants to um, reclaim the jeevas and he just wants to come and give them his love and affection so he just talks to them and they get so attracted and not only them um, even the sadhus the sages who've been doing tapasya inside the forest and they all been meditating on lord ram and they're so happy finally they're able to see the see lord ram and also um do they've all given up their material aspirations and you know whatever material things they had but even if there is some subtle somewhere impurity that also lord ram is removing by you know giving them darshan face to face so whatever that was it's gone you know and they are all um, completely attracted and by lord rama's uh, form and they're becoming so happy seeing lord ram and um, even this uh, villagers they are so mesmerized by lord ram's beauty in fact valmiki rama and he makes very funny statement he says valmiki uh, says that um, they ask uh, sita mata um, among the two uh, handsome uh, men who is your husband because they just want to know if you know who is her husband so at least the second you know they can try talking or making a friendship that's what valmiki says in a very funny way that they're so attracted by the beauty of these two men so how is he related to you and what way is he related and is he married also and why did you end up in this forest and why is how can your mother and father be so heartless to send such tender sweet looking you know they, they were also very young into this hard forest life what did you do why did you get banished what happened uh, okay you can stay with us it's okay we'll take care of you this 14 years and they are like no no we need to move forward and that way everybody is getting so attracted and so attached that every time that he's passing from one forest to another there are people who are crying and they don't want him to go and then they're just following him and following him to some extent and then he again has to keep moving so like that um you know dandakana dandaka vana jana pavana rama it's just purifying everybody and actually the uh, <coughs> lord ram's appearance was for these reasons only to give affection to give protection to give uh, make some correction because um, he wanted to give affection to his devotees you know and also <laughs> and also 
Mother Lakshmi had a complaint in Sweta Dweep that you hardly give me any personal time. You know, always your devotees are coming and sometimes Indra comes and then Brahma comes and they always have some problems and issues and we need to have some personal time. So Lord uh, Ram, uh, Lord says, all right, so when I, you know, come as Lord Ram, we'll have 14 years of exclusive time. So that's, you know, one thing, affection and correction. Lord Ram also came for correction because in the Ishwaku dynasty, they had this service of Ranganath and they were not doing it properly. This, the services of Ranganath. So he wanted to come in this dynasty and make sure that, you know, he makes the necessary changes and make sure that they do the puja seva properly. And then of course, of course, for protection of the sages because they were all, you know, put into a lot of trouble by uh, Ravana. And he wanted to share, you know, uh, you know, uh, reciprocate with these devotees who were meditating on him for maybe thousands of years in that Dandakaranya forest and, and uh, they were waiting to see Lord Ram. So this is what happens. Dandakavana jana pavana rama dushta viradha vinashana rama. Now this is very interesting. Viradha, dushta viradha is bad, bad man or viradha. Viradha was a demon. It was, was a fierce demon. Very deadly looking and huge and all blood coming out from his mouth. And he had this big garland which, were, which was basically made of skulls of different animals that he had killed so far or and he was looking very fierce so when lord rama and lakshman and uh, sita were walking he suddenly kidnaps uh, sita and then uh, uh, lakshman and lord ram start shooting arrows on him but they realize that it's just not working he's very powerful at one point the the fighting becomes so fierce that mother sita says to um, uh, viradha you take me it's okay but please don't kill them just they, they were they're very innocent just leave them alone and then ram and lakshman are smiling to each other who looks like she's really getting afraid now we really need to show our power so they start hitting more arrows and this time they actually cut both of his arms but what they realize is even as the war goes on that looks like he's protected by some special armor or maybe some kind of a boon because he's not dying so then finally what they do is they decide to bury him alive so lord ram puts his leg on his head of viradha and um Lakshman starts digging and they actually bury him uh, alive and when they bury him alive then he dies and then what they realize is he's a celestial being called Tumbura and he was cursed by Kavera, Kuvera because he had misbehaved with Kuvera's daughter-in-law. So he was cursed and he says Lord Ram I've been waiting for you and I'm very happy you have delivered me finally. So Dushta Viradha Vinashana Rama he just kills that um, demon Viradha and uh, delivers him. And then comes the next slide. Sarabhanga Sutikshana Archita Rama. Sarabhanga was also one of the very popular sage. Popular, why so? Because when Lord Rama and Lakshman and Sita, when they enter his hermitage, to their surprise, what they see is Sarabhanga's ashram, it had chariots and chariots all in the air. You know, with so many demigods and they will not understand what's happening and he's just having some discussion and they're all they're all in the air and then when lord ram enters they all move away so they they ask sarabhanga what's happening here so sarabhanga says that i've done so many austerities that these demigods and indra and they all keep coming regularly requesting me that you have done so many austerities you don't deserve to stay in the forest please come with us we take you to higher uh, planets but i said no because i was waiting for you you know i want to see you so then uh, lord ram becomes very happy blesses him and then um, sarabhanga says that i have only one desire i want to leave my body in front of you looking at your beautiful face so lord says all right so then he finally makes a funeral um, the, the the pyre uh, the fire and then he enters in the fire uh, while looking at lord ram and then uh, before uh, leaving his body he says you please make it a point to meet um, sutikshana he's also waiting for you and then he just leaves his body he was very intelligent i mean though he had um, all these proposals of you know this loka and that loka but he wanted to go back home back to godhead so he waited for lord ram and he left his body then he goes to uh, lord ram goes a little more further and then he meets sutikshna sutikshna is also very popular he was a um, disciple of agatsya muni and he becomes very happy when he sees lord ram and he's uh, he's adoring the lord's beauty and he he renders beautiful prayers to Lord Ram. He becomes very happy on seeing him. And then he says, um, My dear Lord, you must also meet 
Agatsya Muni, he's here. You know, just a little bit more further and you can go and meet him. His ashram is here. So like that, they were all guiding him, you know, like go for a go, you know, this was this devotee is waiting for you and that devotee has been waiting for you. So Lord Ram is just like meeting everybody. And Agatsya Muni was very popular because he was having the special ability. He was just you know, drink the whole ocean and so finally Lord Ram meets him and and then uh, something very special happens. Agatsimuni gives Lord Ram um, special um, verses called the Aditya Hridayam. There's a special set of verses. Even to uh, now even today also I think in South India it's very popular. Aditya Hridayam, oh many people they they have it in their daily sadhana the pious Hindu people. It's a prayer for sun god and which energizes, which gives good health. And so um, he Agatsimuni gives this prayer to Lord Ram and that was very helpful to him, so-called help. I mean, he's a supreme personality of God. But in his Leela, uh, when he when he kills Ravan and every time that he's shooting an arrow and Ravan's another head pops up, and then finally, you know, his energies energy is all sapping away. Now he's, he's, he's so that time Agatse Muni appears there and then again they recite, you know, this Aditya Hridayam and that gives Lord Ram a lot of energy and and then again he uh, continues his war with Ravan. So then he meets um, Agatsya Muni also there. So he meets Sarabhanga, he meets um, Sutikshana, he meets Agatsya. So like that, so many beautiful pastimes happen and then and then again Agatsya guides him. Okay go more further and then you will meet this person so like that it keeps on and everywhere that lord ram goes he's he'll ask only one question um, talk about scriptures bless them take their blessings and then he says where should i go now where do i th you think i can make my hut you know so innocently and so sweetly he asks. he asked this question to valmiki also and, and Valmiki, he says, my Lord, what is this question, my Lord? Where should I go and stay? Where are you not there? Can you tell me that? Where are you not there? You are everywhere in every Anu. And you ask me this question, where should I go and stay? And then Lord Ram is saying, oh, that's all right. That's between us. But for this Leela, can you tell me, where should I go and stay? Where should I make my hut? And then, you know, Valmiki says something so beautiful. Maybe I can just share with you for another five minutes before I close it. Um, he gives a big list to Lord Ram. And I think this is pretty interesting. You can actually note it down so that we know also that if we want Lord Ram to stay with us, what are the qualifications required? Because Valmiki gives a huge list. I think 14 or 14 places or something like that. He gives a big list that this is where you should go and stay, my Lord, he says. So he says, um, go and s my Lord, go and stay in those places where... People have ears which are like ocean. Now, what does that mean, ears like ocean? So, that means just like an ocean never complains, no matter how many rivers enter, enter inside the ocean, the ocean never says, Oh, enough, I don't want to take any more. Similarly, those devotees who are uh, so happy when listening to your pastimes, their ears become like ocean. Even if they are hearing more and more, they never say, okay, I'm satiated. No, I want more, I want more. So go and stay in that person's house, my Lord. Like that he'll say 14 things. Go and stay in the house of that person who worships mother cow or who has Tulasi in his house. And says, go and stay in that person's house who is non-envious. Go and stay in that person's house who respects Guru more than Krishna. And he says, go and stay in that person's house who worships you as a family. That means Sita, Ram, Lakshman, Hanuman. Or rather who worships you with his family. That means the whole family, mother, father, brother, everybody sitting together and worshipping. Go and stay in their house. And go and stay in their house who never speak a lie. And go and stay in their house who... Um, who use all their senses in pleasing you. With their eyes, they are seeing your beautiful form. With their nose, they are smelling the tulasi which is offered to you. With their using their tongue to taste your prasadam or sing your holy names. And they are using your ears to hear the kata. They are using their legs to go to holy pilgrimages. Go and reside in their house. And I said, go and reside in the house of uh, uh, those who consider others' property as poison and others wife as mother go and reside in their house that's go and reside in the house of those who are 
ajat shatru they are loved by all they have no enemies go and stay there go and stay in the house of people who are sama in sukha dukha whether they are in bad situation or good situation whether respected they are disrespected they always maintain equilibrium or you know they are sama go and stay in their place go and stay in their place who even in their sleep they remember you you should go and stay in their place go and stay in their place who love you more than their life for whom you are their life and soul and you should go and stay to you know there those who are para dukha dukhi you know if somebody is sad they become sad Th- those who are having that kind of nature go and stay with them and like there are so many things and those who think you as their sarvasva mata pita guru everything is my lord is everything for them go and stay there go, those who do mantra japa those who do dt worship so like that um, so many places that they say that my dear lord go and stay there and i thought this was interesting so that we can make a checklist of you know, how many of these things were able to uh, fulfill then lord ram will come and stay in our house so like that lord keeps um, traveling from one hermitage to another and from one forest to another so um uh, uh, it's nine here already so i'll end it here and we'll continue tomorrow i'll, I'll stop it here of course i couldn't uh, complete the aranya kanda but uh, tomorrow we'll try to go a little faster but what we will do is i don't know if i i, I cannot complete the whole uh, ramayan but what i'll do is whatever i can complete tomorrow i complete and that's it we pause there and then we see some other time to um uh, complete this whole nam ramayan because um i wouldn't be able to go fast and you know somehow my heart will not accept though i was told that somehow you know try and finish it up in this two days and somehow complete it but it, it's so difficult because everything is having so many things connected you know each line has so many past times and so um, i'll just try and complete whatever is possible tomorrow and then we can see what, when we can do the rest of it or i can do it with some other yatra and at least those who are watching it online can have a series where they can have a complete uh, Nam Raman is what my plan is. Okay, with this I'll end it here. Thank you so much, Sri Ramachandra Bhagavan Ki Jai Jagat Guru Sri La Prabhupada Ki Jai Hare Krishna. So, a uh, couple of questions from Richa Mataji. So, basically, she's asking about how you mentioned about selecting our association within devotees also. So, how should we carefully do that so that we are not committing Vaishnava Prad at the same time, you know, selecting our association? Uh, and she's asking, <clears throat> you know, how about the reversal question also that uh, uh, do sadhaka accept everything smilingly even though if uh, it hurts us a lot and from within and don't pay attention to our own needs so how to balance it 
you know, just taking too much upon us in the reversals and, you know, um, so those are some Okay, okay, thank you. So you, yeah, I'll just try to take it, you know, okay, segment wise. So first question was, um, okay, about the reversals, how do you take reversals? Every time can you take it with a smile, okay, it's my karma, if they're hurting us too much, how do we go about it? No, the whole point is, uh, if we are very clear with our goals, we can make very easily the decisions. The whole point is we want to go back home, back to Godhead. And what is helping us in this regard, that is what we select. So sometimes, let's say for some reversals or some situations in our life are in such a way that if we don't act on it, it's hampering our Krishna conscious journey, then we act. For example, now let us take something from Rama itself. If you see um, in Lord Rama's life, when he was asked to go to the forest, by his father, he says, it's my destiny and I accept it. And he doesn't try to do, Lakshman says, let's, uh, you know, attack Dashrata and arrest him and fight and get the, you know, get our rights. But he says, no, I don't want to do it. It's my destiny. But same Lord Ram, when his wife Sita gets kidnapped by Ravan, he does not say, it's my destiny. If my wife gets kidnapped, what can I do about it? He doesn't. He actually goes out of his way and he forms his monkey army and he fights it out with Ravan. So now people may question, why didn't at that time he just accept it as his destiny? Why did he fight? So how do you make a choice? When is it destiny and when I need to fight back? Now what we see in Ramayan is they're not asking you to blindly accept your destiny. What they're asking you is that you give importance to your duty. What's your primary duty? As a son, his primary duty was to, to be an obedient son and follow the orders of his father, you know, and uphold his father's word. So he just did his duty, what his obedient son needs to do. And in that course, he accepted it as a destiny. And when it come with Sita, Mother Sita's kidnapping, he did his duty. What a husband supposed to do is to protect his wife. And no matter what hurdles came, he just, you know, went ahead and he fought the war with Ravana and got his wife back. So that's it. So what's our duty? Now, I cannot make any blanket statement, but according to your situation, circumstance, and then our goal is clear and then we and then we decide because you can't fight every battle the life will come with so many battles in front of you but you need to pick it up which battle you want to fight and which battle you don't want to fight so if there are battle which when fought is going to help me speed up my journey in krishna consciousness and i fight for it and if i see this is going to waste my time and it's not making that much sense then i just leave it and as far as coming about hurt if you see everything with multi-life perspective the hurt becomes a little less the hurt comes in when we actually identify ourselves with the body too much then only the whole hurt thing comes in picture this is me, I am this, and this is what has been done to me. But if we start seeing things with multi-life perspective, uh, you know, previous life, and I don't even know if this person is, you know, going to be with me, uh, you know, another few years from now or next life, you know, then everything will become so different when you see it in, you know, in that level. Have you seen sometimes, you know, close quarters, some patients who suffer from cancer, you know, you'll see there'll be so much change in their attitude because now that they know that they're going to live temporarily, they just start see being grateful to things, people, situation, and they don't want to be bad to anybody because they know they're just for some more time and they just want to be nice to everybody and everything changes. Similarly, actually, we if we every day think that I'm temporary in this world, Actually, we'll be very nice and our relationship with everybody will be so nice and we'll be able to forget and forgive so easily. The hurting thing happens when too much identification with our body. If we are very, like I many times I give this example that when we are in a crowded, I, of course you are in the United States, I don't know if you have faced a situation, but in India, yes, you know, in a crowded train, in a crowded bus and 
but you are okay because you know you know your destination is another 15 minutes and you will be relieved of all these suffering you know back ache and all these people and um smelly armpits and whatever situation it is that that's it with the life too if you know it's just matter of some time that i have to tolerate this person or tolerate this situation and these are just temporary inconveniences for permanent happiness it will not give us so much trouble at the same time i'm not talking about extreme abuses or something like that it just you just need to pick up you know by by confronting or by doing this is it facilitating your krishna consciousness is it making you is it going to make your chanting more blissful if you say this to this person just now and you're going to feel happy about it then you can go ahead if it's inspiring you and if you think it's i know it's just going to make it more bitter then you just tolerate you know because he you will say something and you will disturb his chanting and then he'll say something back which will disturb your chanting and everything gets disturbed for another few weeks so just have to you know you'll have to just uh, see the pros and cons and how much is helping you in krishna consciousness so yeah deep hurt means um deep attachment the deeper our hurt is that means the deeper our attachment to body the lesser attachment to the body the lesser hurt because you not care what anybody says it doesn't go that hard deep uh, so um whenever we get deeply hurt means we should understand that we are not connected to krishna just now properly that's why the deep hurt is coming others it not come like that because um i don't know many times i give this materialistic example that if you are in love everything looks lo- lovely because you are actually on some some other level and thinking something in your mind and everything around you looks so beautiful when somebody when we when we are progressing in our love with krishna everything in this world looks nice only even if apparently there may be somebody who is practically disturbing you also it's, it's okay because you are you are on, on a high but um but of course if we are not on that we we are, we are not on that level so practically we'll have to deal with situation so yeah so we should just see if it's too much impact we can always take a counsel with um, other devotees around us and because it's see everything is actually having so many things interconnected what we are seeing our hurts or our anger or our feeling it's all the tip of the iceberg actually there's so many factors connected to that why is it happening i mean i don't know i don't know if i'm making my answer complicated but if if somebody asks why is the water boiling there are hundreds of reasons first of all the fire is on that's why the water is boiling now we can't say that the water is boiling because he wore a blue shirt and she came at 4 o'clock in the evening and uh, the the tube light of the kitchen was not working actually these are not the reason why the water is boiling the water is boiling because the fire is on so um, the deep lying problem is uh, uh, lack of shravanam and proper chanting and um, loss of focus on the goal and all those are actually the deep lying reasons but the other reasons are like these reasons which i said because he is wearing a blue shirt and she has put the tube light off and he came late from the college and that's why the water is boiling we can see that but it's not making sense because actual reason is something else so um that's what i feel and but at the same time you know you should just you should just take it what is it? we can understand actually we are very intelligent we don't need anybody's help we can actually under- understand what association is inspiring and what association is not inspiring the first part of your question how do we know because when i said that um devotees also they may have tilak and kanti and um, and then um, but they may not have um, divine qualities or you know when their association may also be like mantra you never know so yeah so i think our mind is very intelligent and we understand whose association when we take um, uh, our chanting has become very nice today and we are feeling very inspired in krishna consciousness and and after whose association we are feeling a little dull today i think we can very well make out we don't need anybody's uh, uh, help on that only thing is we actually enjoy a uh, little uh, sometimes a lower um, uh, association also um, though uh, sometimes this this lower emotions they hijack our rational intelligence though we are reading scriptures and we are intelligent we are able to understand but but our uh, raft of rational intelligence sometimes gets um, 
hijacked by these waves of lower emotion and those lower emotions can be controlled only by uh, mantra chanting if we do nice chanting and more of reading um, and and take um, and enjoy a little bit of more of higher taste you know and then this uh, lower emotions gets little bit cooled down did i make the answer complicated did it make sense Thank you. Okay, so right now it's 11.48 here. Okay, uh, Dandavat Pranam Mataji, did, are you asking about the verses, 108 verses? Yeah, Ma, yeah. Mataji, this is, this is by Lakshmana Acharya. He comes in the disciplic succession of uh, Lakshmi Devi, Sri Sampradaya. And this is called Nama Ramayan and it has 108 verses and 7 khandas. Uh, yes, Mataji, it has. Same. Okay. Balakanda, Yodhya, Aranya, Kishkinda, Sundara, Uttara. The same kandas. Okay, and um, is it written in Sanskrit originally? Yes, yes, Mataji. Actually, Mataji, you can go on the internet. You just go for KK songs. Krishna conscious, uh, Krishna Kirtan, KK songs. And you just type Nam Ramayan. You will just get the whole thing. Thank you. I look forward to tomorrow as well. Okay. Thank you, Mataji. Hi, Krishna. Jai. Krishna, 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 Krishna. Krishna Krishna